like to talk a little bit about the materials that are available for painting in watercolor and when you first approach watercolor uh, where do you begin? You, you arrive at the art store and there's so much to, available. Uh, what kind of brushes do you pick and what kind of paper and paints and there's so much to think about and what quality and what kind. So I'd like to talk a little bit today about brushes, paints and paper and some other of my favorite uh, things, objects to paint with. I'll start today with brushes. Um, brushes are one of one of your most important tools besides paper and brushes come in all sizes and shapes and when you're first starting out you want to have enough of a variety of brushes so that you can achieve some landscapes or floral paintings with some of these tools and my suggestion is is get a good wash brush for doing your backgrounds and your washes this is a two inch brush it's a Winsor Newton series and it's a, it's a wonderful brush they're they're not cheap but I've had this brush for example for almost 20 years and it's still going strong so this is an investment that you'll want to make at the beginning uh, if you know you're going to continue in watercolor I highly recommend getting good equipment because that will make all the difference in the results of what you're going to do so the two inch brush is nice for applying water on your paper and also large washes if you're doing a large full sheet or even a half sheet. This is a one and a half inch and I'll use this one. This one's very nice. It actually fits very nicely right into the, the well of this Quiller palette. So when I'm doing my first wet and wet wash, I can use this and and get some nice loose soft colors for the background. There's brushes. These are these are flat brushes and then I'll talk a little bit about round brushes. These are some of the round brushes that are available and they come in all sizes. This one here is a finer tip and we call this a script brush. This is used for, for detail work, and I'll show you a little bit about that in a minute. And these are uh, different sizes of rounds. They also come in, in smaller. Here's a smaller round. And when you're first starting, if you get a small and a medium and a large, that will set you up pretty well for uh, pretty much any painting that you, you would approach and, and a script brush. And then in addition to that, later on, if you want to add a few more brushes that are a little interesting, you can um, go out and purchase a hog hair brush. This is a natural bristle brush. These are not that expensive, but they're really fun to create texture and other things when you're doing a landscape. This is another example of a natural bristle brush, a really long brush and I'll show you in a minute what this one can do also in creating texture. And then you've got uh, a couple of other varieties of brushes. There's a fan brush which is an interesting brush uh, to create some different kinds of movements in your paintings and this is the script brush that I talked about earlier. It's a very fine point with a long, uh, long um, brush end and and this long end is wonderful because it it picks up a lot of paint so you you don't have to go dipping into your palette quite so often and I can pick up some paint easily with this and what's nice about this is we can get some real detail work in here and you can see already how soft this background is becoming and if I want to get back to a little more of this detail, maybe some of this, this tree here, the branches are a little more defined. Pick up a little blue, purple. So I can create linear shapes with this brush. Tree shapes or grass shapes. And then finally, what's really fun to do is throw in a little bit of salt. And salt is a, is a wonderful 
thing to use in creating texture. And these two are squirrel hair brushes, and these are really fun. They hold a huge amount of water and lots of paint. So if you get water on these and you get a bunch of paint in these brushes, they go a long way. They're, they're very soft and they're very fun to use. And then one of my favorite types of brushes to use are my oriental brushes. These brushes are wonderful for doing some loose oriental style flowers or even throwing paint, splattering, that kind of thing. Those are really fun. So I'd like to show you a few of the things these brushes can do now. And I'll start with, a, with one of these large ones here. I'll, I'll even start with the, the very big one. This is my two inch brush and I'm just getting a little water on it and I'm wetting. So this is an example of a wash brush so I'm laying down some of the water right onto the paper and that way when I add my color it will give me a really soft glow of color. So I'll start with a little yellow and just brush it in and you can see how with this large brush you get some nice large sweeps of color. And I add a little bit of my quinacridone rose to this and I can actually go right over some of the yellow maybe over here a little bit and I'm going to throw in a little blue so I, if you notice I'm, I'm just throwing in some of these three primary colors and just let them mix on the paper. So these wash brushes are really fun and then if you tip your paper you can run it together a little bit get these colors mixing or just encourage them a little with the brush and you can get a nice sunset glow very quickly with these big wash brushes so these are wonderful so then if you want to do a little more on this as while it's still wet you can take um, your hog hair brush and just get it a little bit wet not too wet and if you pick up some some strong color I'm going into my quinacridone burnt orange and I'm getting it a little bit thicker it's it's not real watery it's a little of a stiffer mixture so you can already see how what kind of movement and texture this brush gives you in in the palette here so I'm going to dip part, this this side into the quin burnt orange and this side into the blue and I'll get I'll double load this brush so here I can get some and throw in some grasses here very quickly. So th these brushes are really fun for creating. And if you dab it, you get some texture going here. And maybe there's a tree. So if I want to get a tree, I can even use my fan brush here and create a tree very quickly with this fan brush. So you can see how fast, if you use the right tool, you can create different objects very quickly. And then with my beautiful oriental brush, I can add a little more interest to this. I'm going to throw in, splatter in a little bit of color in here just to give a little variety in this color scheme and I'm getting a little bit of throwing here in my sky but that's okay I'm not worried about that and then you can even add a little more of that intense color in like this but I love these oriental brushes for the splattering that you can do in creating some of those textures. So I hope you learned a little bit about the different kinds of brushes and how to use them and that helps you to when you go to the store to buy the tools that you need. So go ahead.
Fine.